Have you seen the movie uh, in front of an audience like this? No. First time, huh? No. Yeah. First time. I, I got the mic. I've uh, seen the movie, but only in a sm small circle. Yeah. Television, not such a big screen. Yeah. Uh, well, how is it... Uh, for you to see the movie with an audience reacting to it? Well, you know, it's uh, <laughs> you can't ask for more than what they did for me here, you know. <laughs> I heard my music and uh, you know, as part of the film, and it was just a wonderful experience. And, and uh, such a big audience, and uh, everybody was uh, receptive and interested and kind and very nice, very nice. How did the uh, film critics review your, i uh, sorry, the music critics review your music? Uh, as a critic, uh, as having a, being a critic like that, it's just, it's the critic's opinion. Uh, other critics think differently and so on. So uh, basically, when I hear my music, like the Song of Songs, as a critic, I have nothing to criticize. I like it. <laughs> sure, yeah. sure. No, it's dissonance, but it's, but it's a harmonic dissonance. It's not dissonance like Schoenberg, which is dissonance for dissonance sake, so that it makes it modern. No, I use dissonance for expressive purposes, and then consonance when there's something nice to, to say, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Was there a political message in the music? Yes and no. Political that I am a Jew. If nothing else matters to me as much as my being a Jew. And this is in my bones and, and uh, I, I suffer for being a Jew, you know, in Austria and, and Hitler and all that. And I don't know that it, uh, it solidified my feeling of Jewishness, but even over there, when I went to school, you know, the uh, I was one of three Jews in a class of 30, and they often beat me up. The, the, the other kids, you know, there was uh, because they knew that you were a Jew because they had religion, religion as a subject, and so when they had religion, 30. Students were in class for the Catholic, and then the three Jews had to go somewhere else in the afternoon to be taught by some rabbis. So there were only three Jews among 30. So, and the, everybody knew you were a Jew. When you you mentioned in your talk that uh, that it was recognized that the Jews were the cultural elite. Oh yes. Definitely, the, the, I said a hundred. Vienna had a, a had 1.8 million inhabitants, and 180,000 were Jews, and they were the cultural elite in Vienna. No question about it. You know. Was that a contributing factor to the anti-Semitism in the city? You you feel? Well, in some way, it could. It you can say it was. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's just the audience in the opera, so many Jews, concerts full of Jews, you know, that kind of theater full of Jews, you know, that kind of thing. It's probably, a, in a sense, a contributor. But anything, just to be a Jew, was enough for them to be anti-Semitic. You know? yeah. Even before the Nazis? Y yes, there was anti-Semitism, but they didn't kill you. When the Nazis came, it was all over. Not only uh, they, they they took the uh, they took everybody to all Jewish property in one day. They said, "Out of the store, it's mine now." Just that's how it happened. Yeah, and that's why the the Nazis had so much success because they they got something that they wanted. They didn't have. You know, they walked into the store and said, this is mine now, out, you know. Did they do that with other businesses, factories? Oh, with everything, everything, everything. 
Not, why not? And everything in Jewish hands was taken away from them. Are you, are you concerned about a resurgence in anti-Semitism these days? Of course I'm concerned about it. and It'll never end. The Jews are cursed to be uh, looked at that way. Look in Belgium now. But partly it's the Muslim. Uh, Brussels has 60% Muslims of, uh, in their population. It's awful. It's just awful. Is it Look in Congress that we have that, that horrible woman. Yes. Yeah, dreadful. Yeah. So you have a lot to be proud of tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah.